Hey, everybody. Welcome to Pace Studio on the Road, brought to you by our friends at Show X. We're here at the beautiful Cutting Room in Midtown Manhattan right now with Kevin Daniel. Kevin Daniel, thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. So happy to be here, man. Yeah, man. This is a pleasure to uh, to meet you in person. We got a chance to do a virtual thing a couple of months ago, and I now know. here we are in the same actual room. Mm -hmm. Still virtual to the internet, but we're here. Feels good. That much closer. And then one day the mask won't be here and we can actually hug. That's right. That's right, man. I look forward to that day, um, and I look forward to what we're doing right now. We're about to share a lot of your music from across your catalog with the internet. What's happening first? We are going to do a song called All I Need. All I Need. This is a song off uh, Things I Don't See, my latest release. And just before we start playing, we got Franklin over here on the bass. Franklin! We got Josh over here on the electric guitar. Right, and Josh. we got Eric back here on the drum kit. Thank you, Eric. And uh, this song is about uh, a crush I had in middle school, and let's just say I still don't think she knows about it. All right. One, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, even if you want me, and even if you don't. Even if this body isn't something that you want Perhaps maybe one day you'll notice I'm alive Even if you never will, I still think I'll try Well, I wish I had a reason to live and live One more, perhaps maybe one day you'll stop and just think, even if you never read on me.
Hey, not so bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my God, playing in a room where people clap after you finish. Yep. Yep. I don't even know what to do with myself. All four of us, the crowd has gone wild. That was the sound of the crowd going wild. Dude, thank you for doing this, man. This is a total pleasure on both sides. This is uh, I mean, I feel like opportunity. I just had like the shivers run down my throat because I was like, I can't believe that we're like playing music right now. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the first person. You guys have had people in here all week. I'm sure a lot of people have had like almost breakdowns on the stage, but thank you for having us. Yeah, it is. It is a similar feeling shared by a lot of people, but also, but one that doesn't wear off, man. It doesn't get old. I feel the exact same way every time. Like this is so so uncommon. I mean, if this is very... how we feel right now, what is it going to feel like when you go back to your first show of the person that you love to see? All your friends are there. Oh my God, the feeling is going to be incredible when we can do that again. Yeah. Yep, I cannot wait. This is a wonderful, wonderful holdover in the meantime. It's amazing. We're, we're Thank you guys to be able so much. To do this. Um, the first time that we crossed paths virtually, you were living the dream in Costa Rica. You're surfing every day in a shack on the beach, which was outstanding. I mean, and that was not that long ago. It was maybe two months, three months ago, something like that. You know, like I tell that. people all the time about that because the internet didn't go out. And the internet went out every day for at least 30 minutes. A whole month I was there. And then with me and you, no problems. Solid. Rock solid Perfect. the whole time. Um, so yeah, that was your, great. What has your chronology been like since since Surfing Daily until right now? What have you been up to? You know, honestly, I'm trying to finish this. Uh, I'm trying to finish this album. I started an album in uh, New York City with Sean Walsh of the National Reserve. He runs a studio out of Williamsburg. Had a bunch of great names on that. Too many names to count. Went down to Costa Rica to uh, surf and finish an album. And I I did a little bit of both. Um, a lot more surfing than album writing, but I did finish all the songs and actually me and Josh are in a songwriting thread together that has been kind of kicking both of our butts, but I squeezed a few new songs out of that thread. And so I'm going to finish the rest of this album at Echo Mountain, which is a beautiful studio in an old church in Asheville, North Carolina. And that's kind of the plan right now, man. Outstanding. And, well, dude, yeah. thank you. Thank you for making this part of your uh, your pandemic experience. And this being is here technically and doing my winter today. tour, actually. <laughs> this show. <laughs> I should have made some posters. The entire we are witnessing the entirety of it right this second, and yeah. we are we are only one quarter of the way into the winter tour right now. Oh There's, no, uh, it's already a quarter over. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've got uh, you've got a, a, re a recent release coming up next. Yeah. What did I say we were gonna play? We're gonna do used to be. Yeah, this song is called Used To Be, and uh, this song is about getting older. Um, I'm 34 years old, which I never thought I would be. Uh, thank you to whoever is responsible for me still being alive. And um, yeah, you know, I used to, as a young person, I used to hate getting older. You know, I always wanted to be as young as possible. I always like, just didn't want to deal with that. But now that I'm older, I realize that I'm the coolest I've ever been. Um, <laughs> and I kind of appreciate getting older. I like it. And uh, you know, so that's sort of what the song is about. It's off my album, Things I Don't See, which is my latest release. And um, honestly, it might be one of my favorite songs that I have. But don't tell the other songs up. And it's going to start out with a nice little solo from uh, my man Josh Allen over here. Why don't we get that started? Don't <laughs>
give a special out to Franklin over here. Uh, we just met two hours ago, and he just learned he was playing this gig like five hours ago. <laughs> so yeah, well done, Franklin. thanks for showing up, bro. <laughs> nice. Um, so I, I know that you've played this stage before. This is not your first Cutting Room show. Um, can you talk about back back in the, the days when shows were a thing and you were here, <laughs> yeah. here full time? Uh, what were some of your regular haunts? But I know Rockwood is a big part of uh, big Rockwood part of Rockwood is uh, certainly a regular haunt. I miss that place. And my fingers are crossed that it makes it through on the other side. I think they'll be doing I think they'll be doing OK. But yeah, you know, Rockwood. I also did a lot of bluegrass stuff when I lived here. So, you know, I was out at Sunny's a lot, too. Oh, yeah. Um, out in Red, Red Hook. Hook. Um, National Underground used to do a lot of bluegrass stuff. I don't even know if that place is around anymore. God, I'm gonna I'm gonna date myself saying all this stuff. I just saw a poster for the living room earlier and almost cried. Um, yeah, you know, honestly, like the joke about me is like I don't really play that much in New York because I really love to tour. I really love to be on the road. Um, but I did have an album release here. Actually, I released things I don't see here, and then before that, I played with my friend's band. Um, which was kind of a Blues Brothers joke band, but I played saxophone in that band. So I've actually played here twice as a uh, in the background saxophone player and uh, releasing an album. And I mean, I shoot, I miss playing New York so much and I really do miss the cutting room. This is a beautiful venue. It's a shame that you guys who are on camera can't see the rest of it. This is, there is this camera is facing backwards. Okay, they can yeah, kind of I mean, see what's over there. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on around here right now. This is like one of, I think, the last great sort of classic playable venues you know in new york city and um yeah i hope it's here in a few months <laughs> yeah yeah as do we all man new york misses you playing new york new york misses people playing here in general this is so much fun and i'm really glad that we're doing it and there is a lot more yet of your music to be shared yeah, with exactly. the internet and with this room uh what's coming up next today what is coming up next today we're gonna do a song called too bright uh this is a song off my first album fly uh, I wrote Fly. It's a five-song EP that I recorded to Grass out in Brooklyn, New York with Ben Ray. Shout out to Ben. I hope you're watching. One of my favorite producers on the planet. And um, yeah, I wrote this entire song in the two weeks after I lost my mom and my stepdad in a plane flight about seven or eight years ago. Went home, did a bunch of drugs, tried to drown everything out, wrote these songs. Amazing. The songs weren't total trash. And uh, I turned it into an album. And this one is sort of about being in the city, sort of about just like missing the South. I was always one of those Southern kids who wanted to get out as soon as possible. But you know, now that I'm gone, I sort of miss it. So uh, it's kind of about that. And I also just did a music video of this in Costa Rica and with a Costa Rican band. And it sounds very different and very Latin uh, and very cool. But this will not be that version. Oh, uh -huh. 
Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. I think I went, like, full mush face on that one. I'm, like, getting, like, taken back to, like, other shows now where, like, it's weird, right? I don't know. I'm having some weird feelings up here. Good ones. Good. But they're weird. Good. Yeah, it makes sense that, I mean, uh, the thing that is such a huge, has been such a huge part of your life for so long that hasn't been for a year would release some uh It is kind of crazy memories. to have worked so hard to get, like, so I'm not, I mean, look, there are tons of musicians out there who are probably about to, like, break out, have the best year of their life. I, probably not as crazy as mine, but I was supposed to play some festivals I'd never played before. I was supposed to play South By, which I had got an official selection before. I was going to do a couple international tours. And I don't say that to complain as much as I say to just, like, it, to go from something that you worked so hard for to all of a sudden just really not be able to do anything about it, like, you just, it's out of your hands. It is a pretty crazy feeling. And it took me, and I'm sure a lot of other people, months to sort of honestly just accept it. it it's, I, try, I kept on trying to book tours. <laughs> and it, it obviously didn't work. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I feel the same way, man. We used to do, we did this three times a day, every day. We were recording 15 sessions a week at the Pace Studio, and it was beautiful. Like, that mm. was the exact intersection of yeah. my abilities and interests. It was an absolute perfect job. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And then all of a sudden, it's gone, and we're doing everything that we can by yeah. any means necessary to keep this thing going and partnering up with different places like the Cutting Room, like Club Passim in Cambridge, and just keep it going and keep on taking ourselves to the bands since bands can't be on the road to come to us yeah man it's um i mean anyone who who gets this opportunity to this with you guys is very fortunate as are we and uh yeah i mean like you're improving my mental health right now you know i was gonna go do crazy stuff tonight but now i might just go get dinner and go home so <laughs> new york is a safer place because of you guys nice good good um man so i know you were talking about the uh the upcoming record and i know you recorded at uh uh with sean walsh of the national reserve so the tracking part of that is done the, the mm -hmm. brooklyn part of that recording is done um, is the recording at Echo Mountain finished, or are you guys? Oh, is no, that that's up, scheduled for up, March. Upcoming. I'm doing all the boring behind the scenes stuff they have to do before you record, which is get all the chord charts together, get all your demos together, get all the musicians together, make sure everyone's schedule is fine. And then once you actually give them the songs, let them take a couple weeks to tell you how much they suck and how much better the songs could be if you did this, this, and this. So we're sort of in the, these songs suck, let's make them better phase. Um, <laughs> luckily, I'm working with a band that's played together a lot, this band called Andrew Scotchy and the River Rats in Asheville. They're a local band. Andrew is actually gonna co-produce this, uh, this part of the album with me. And yeah, I mean, we're getting close. We're going into this, uh, Echo Mountain is an old church in Asheville and it is just, I've never been in there, but I've heard the vibes are just awesome and really beautiful and great gear. So, you know, like I can't tour. This is kind of the next best thing creatively and musically is to make more music. I think that, I mean, I know that me and Josh have written a ton of songs. It sounds like these guys, we were got here early listening to honestly, just songs we had all written during quarantine, just swapping songs in the car. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a really good time to dig into your creativity and to dig into stuff that you're not comfortable with, like, you know, songwriting or using, you know, I think Eric's teaching classes on Ableton. So just things that might be a bit of a stretch for you. This has been a really good time for me to sort of try and get over that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, when you guys do get into the studio, are you, do you intend, uh, is the instrumentation going to be roughly similar on the upcoming project to what we're seeing here today? Or is yeah, there, I mean, the instrumentation when I go in the studio always starts out like this and usually there's a keys player too. So it'll be like this, but with a keys player, but I love horns. I'm a saxophone player and I used to play in jazz and blues bands my whole life. You know, we were talking about new Orleans earlier. I love new Orleans so much. I love the music down there. If I can find some good horn players, I mean, in, in New York City, you just like say the word horn and there's like 10 trumpet players who are like the best trumpet players you've ever heard in your life, just like right next to you. I don't know if that's what's going on in North Carolina. I might have to bring a horn player down from New York City, but I don't know. Maybe we should do some weird North Carolina stuff, like some banjos, some washboards, bagpipes are kind of popular down there. Who knows? <laughs> Anything could happen. Nice. Open book on that one. We'll, we'll, we will very much uh, stay tuned and stay uh, in anticipation for when the details are out about when that record is out. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there's more music yet to come. You're going to play the title track of the 2018 EP, Myself Through You. We're going to play that song, yep. Outstanding. I like that song a lot. Uh, this is another song that was recorded um, at DeGraw Sound in Brooklyn. I feel like I'm always giving them free advertising. I don't even know if I could afford them now. And I, when I went there, it was like their second year as a studio. And now like Ani DeFranco has recorded there and Valerie June, and they've got like gigs with the New York Times to do podcasts in there. So I don't know if I can record again at that studio, but um, this is where it was recorded. The song's called Myself Through You. 
Um, I keep saying this, but it's been four years that our country has kind of been in turmoil. So this is a great song for seeing yourself through another person's point of view. Not just in a way like, do you understand what I mean? But like, when you're in a conversation with somebody and they're pissing you off so much, and you're like, how is this person thinking this? Think of like your crazy uncle at Thanksgiving. Like, how does this person even say this stuff? They're literally thinking the same thing about you. So if you could just take a step back and try and see how crazy you also look through that person's eyes, I don't know, maybe we could all have a laugh about it. But uh, numerically speaking, this is my most popular song. <laughs> According to the books. I'm seeing myself through you About time I saw your shade of blue I am watching myself stumble too Inside I only told you I'm seeing myself Thank you guys for doing this thank you for all the music uh, everything you played tonight is out and in the world right now and there is music that is not yet out in the world forthcoming pretty soon so we will stay tuned for mm -hmm. uh for details on that and we really appreciate you guys coming happy friday evening man. happy it's time friday for, time for a beverage and a hang man this has been outstanding we really appreciate thank you, you guys, guys coming so much for having it. us thanks again to my man franken over here on the bass Frankin. josh on the guitar yeah. eric on the drums and thank you guys for having us